Hello everyone, Sikto here with another video. Today I'll be recommending primary weapons sorted by mastery rank. Quick disclaimer, in my opinion someone below mastery rank 8 shouldn't put any catalyst or forma on any weapon. So I will be showing weapons without a catalyst or forma up to mastery rank 7 and from 8 we'll go all out. If you like any mods that I put in my build, just have a look at my mod video, link in the cards. So let's go. Mastery rank 0. We will be testing on level 20 enemies here. Note that it will increase as we go higher mastery ranks. Burston. This is the beginner weapon to go for. It's easy to build and performs pretty good for levels you see. MK1 Paris. Oh boy do I have a story for this one. It's a single target monster. And not just for the levels you see, no, 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 no. With enough investment, it can one-shot level 145 corrupted heavy gunners. Don't believe me? Link in the cards. Mastery rank 1. Here we test on 25s instead of 20s. Karak. Here we have one of my favorite early game weapons. Karak is the weapon I used to go through the early bits of Star Chart. It has good DPS and good usability. Overall, it's just a good weapon. Mastery rank 2. Boltor. Now here's a good weapon, even though its base stats are worse than Karak, just because it has twice the magazine and only slightly longer reload, we can increase the fire rate and beat Karak in DPS. Mastery rank 3. Here we start testing on level 30s. Paris. Here I suggest you update your MK1 to the normal version, as this one has more base damage, but for some unknown reason, it has less status. Like the normal variant is supposed to be a flat out better version, but the defies logic, so I guess I'm the stupid one here. Mastery rank 4. Heck. Here's a community favorite. Heck has this mod which makes it quite powerful for a mastery rank 4 weapon. Of course, it's a syndicate mod and most likely you don't have access to it. But if you have a friend, they might just give it to you for free. Or you could just pay 10 plat to get it off the trade chat. Dera. Now here's an interesting weapon. It looks good, it acts good, and it outperforms Boltor. So it's time to upgrade. Mastery rank 5. Here we start testing on level 35s. Before I talk about anything else, let me tell you that you can get all of the Kuva weapons as early as mastery rank 5. And no, it doesn't matter that it says MR16 on Kuva Brahma. You can get it at 5 if you do all the quests and kill a lich. But I'm not going to show any Kuva weapons in this video, so I suggest you try all of them out. They're extremely powerful. Dread. This one is a tad hard to get for Mastery Rank 5 since it drops from Stalker, but if you have it, it's surely worth using. Dragoon. Here's another shotgun for ya. If you already are Mastery Rank 5 and you didn't build the heck, or you don't want to go through the trouble of getting a Syndicate mod, Dragoon is a good option. It has like 10% less damage compared to it on my recommended build, but it has more usability and some punch through to make up for it. Tonkor. Here's an AoE weapon to try. Tonkor deals good damage, but it really shines because of its AoE potential. It's specifically useful against Infested and Corpus. Mastery rank 6. Cernos. Here's another bow. Does it be dread? Well, no, not even close. But it's better than Paris. So if you don't have a dread, it's time to upgrade. Rubico. Here's a sniper for ya. It can deal a lot of damage, but in turn, it has garbage usability in normal gameplay. Quick lesson on snipers that you won't find anywhere else. When you use the scope on a sniper, you get 1.5 times the damage no matter you crit or not. And the extra crit damage only works off base, doesn't care if you have crit damage mods on or not. So more often than not, going in max zoom is a bad idea as it barely gives you any extra damage and makes hitting something a lot harder. Also snipers use a combo system. The more hits you do, the more damage you're gonna get. It shows here below your crosshair. Soma. Now here is a favorite of mine. It vastly out DPS as all the automatic weapons you have used so far. Not only because it has better stats, but also because it has two innate V polarities. Mastery rank 7. Here we start testing on level 40s. Atika. You won't see a lot of people using Atika, but I gotta say it's definitely worth using, especially for a new player. It's not a replacement for your bow, 
Neither is a replacement for your Soma, but it's just good. Try it out. Hima. Now, there is a really low chance of you getting a Hima at Master Rank 7, but if you manage to get it, it can certainly perform good if you have the mods on my recommended build. Sobek. Now for Sobek, I have two recommended builds. One is the single target damage, which performs really good, and there's a second one for AoE damage. Yeah, you heard me right. Sobek, a shotgun, can deal AoE damage. Okay, it doesn't do all that much AoE damage, but if we're talking infested, it annihilates them. There is just a teeny tiny problem that you won't be finding this mod just lying around in your ship. It has an 11% drop chance from Kayla the Thame, which is the boss in Sedna. But if you do manage to get one, or you just buy it for 5 to 10 plus from Trade Chat, it's really good. Here is where the transition happens. You turn from this to this. Mastery rank 8. From here on, I will show weapons with catalysts and forma on them, and we will be testing against level 100s. Acceltra. This one used to be so popular before self damage changes that you pretty much always had at least one in your squad. It's a very good weapon with amazing crit chance, fire rate, and AoE capabilities, but going with it to over level 100 is not a good idea because you will run out of ammo and it barely does a decent job. But up to level 100s, it's one of the best options. Corinth. Now here's another favorite of mine. This one is a beast of a pump action shotgun with a shell by shell reload, which is totally badass. I highly recommend it. Fullman, look at this beauty. It has two fire modes, one being semi mode and second one being fully automatic. I suggest using the semi mode for trash mobs because it's kinda AoE and goes through enemies and hits multiple targets. Where it fails however is that the semi mode's actual DPS is kinda garbage and for heavy units I suggest you switch to automatic fire mode with the alt fire key which is your middle mouse by default. Mastery rank 9. Ignis Wraith. Now this one is an old favorite of the community. It's pretty much an awesome weapon with amazing usability and top it all off, it's vastly AoE. To get this one, just type 1 to buy or WTB Ignis Wraith 5P, which is 5 plat in trade chat. If a nice Tenno is online, you might just get it for free. Phantasma. Well, 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 I'm pretty sure a lot of people didn't expect this one on the list. Just to clarify, this weapon was bugged for a good while and it would horribly underperform, but with the bug fixed, let's say it has so much damage and AoE power that Ignis in comparison would look bad. The only thing that some people don't like about it is the small magazine size, but with the super small reload it has and the damage it puts out, I am more than okay with it. Mastery Rank 10 Amprex. I remember first time I saw this weapon's base damage and I was like, 22? That's garbage, I'm not building this weapon. But I made the mistake of judging it by its cover, cause this is a beast of a weapon. Astilla. Even though this one is not as amazing as Amprex, but it's still worth trying out. It has a mini AoE thing going on and it has massive status chance. Just be careful that it doesn't have the best ammo economy, so you might want to take a carrier for extra ammo with yourself or fit ammo mutation in Exile slot. Badacore. This one is a pretty darn good weapon, not just because it puts out good damage numbers, no, because the gimmick on it is pretty nice and frankly really fun. After you kill 3 enemies with the primary fire of the weapon, you get yourself a secondary fire, which is very useful for killing trash mobs. In normal gameplay, it helps you a ton. Baza Prime. This will be the first prime weapon I'm recommending. It's an innately silent weapon. It's really useful when you want to play something like Ivara. It's pinpoint accurate and has a good damage output. Quanta Vandal. This weapon is simply ridiculous. It has built-in multi-shot, ridiculously high status chance, good crit chance and very good crit multiplier. All the while having a fire rate of 12 and a magazine of 80. With a 1.8 reload, this sounds very much like a short range weapon. But it's a pinpoint accurate rifle with 50 meter range. Hearing all of this you might think, okay, this is definitely a very popular weapon, right? That's what I thought. But apparently it also has a 5 out of 5 reverend disposition, meaning it's very unpopular. I will let you think what kind of damage output it has with a ribbon. 
Stalta. This one is very similar to Badakor, both in performance and the gimmick. The difference being that you don't need to kill 3 enemies to get your alt fire, instead it's really slow on the charge and consumes 20 ammo. If you just use the alt fire, you will quickly run into ammo issues, but it's a nice alt fire to have and let's be honest, it's really fun. Mastery rank 11 Synapse. This is the only weapon I'll be recommending in Mastery Rank 11. And it has good reliability. Yeah, give it a try. Mastery Rank 12. Cernos Prime. This is the only bow in game with innate multi-shot. It has 3 multi-shot built in. Unlike many other bows, Cernos Prime can actually do a good job at applying status effects. Which makes it stand on top of all the traditional bows in the game for normal gameplay. Galaxian Vandal. This weapon is pretty similar to Synapse or Quanta Vandal, but it has one thing that makes it shine above those two in normal gameplay, and that is, it has a 3 meter AoE effect on contact. It's not all that amazing damage wise, but the status effects it puts on the enemies really helps with the usability. Stradivar Prime. Automatic for trash mobs and putting status effects on heavy units and a hard hitting semi fire to finish them off. It looks good, it acts good, and it's just fun. I highly recommend putting minus recoil on Exilus for this one. Cypress Prime, a weapon for those who like to look down on everyone else, cause this thing acts just as good as it looks. If you use this weapon a lot, you might end up with an inflated ego, so beware. Mastery rank 13 Shadow. It's good. It's really good. But it has a tiny problem that using it is total eye cancer. That's why you don't see a lot of players using it. If you just put a reload mod on the build, you will be able to hold the fire button and you will never have to reload. So no rest for your burnt eyes. Mastery rank 14 Corinth Prime. This is a favorite of mine. It's a shotgun with awesome usability, very good performance and a 10 meter AOE on the alt fire that unlike the base version, you can detonate whenever you want. Pretty good stuff all around. Supra Vandal. Behold the minigun. This is the weapon with D magazine. If there was ever a time to go for crazy fire rates, it's now. I would even further increase the fire rate, but sadly the mod slot is nowhere to be found. But I mean arcanes are a thing if you want to go nuts. Juge Prime. It's an automatic rifle in a bow's clothing. Oh wait, it's also AoE. It has a 3 second reload, but if you empty the clip, that will be halved, so 1.5 seconds. It is the king of slash. Look at those slash procs, ain't that just beautiful? Did I forget to mention your favorite weapon? Tell me in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, and if you wanna see more of me, hit the subscribe button and don't forget the bell. See you in another video and bye bye!